drive to right. Takes a three. Touchdown, 49ers. Curry! Good morning, Farhan. Uh, could you please tell us what the status of the coaching staff is right now? Right. Uh, good place to start. I um, had conversations with all of those guys one-on-one -on -one over the last couple of days, obviously. Um, we are you know, just kicking off our managerial process at this point. And you know, the message that we've given them is uh, we're going to hold on filling uh, out the coaching staff until uh, we have a manager in place. And as such, those guys are free to pursue other opportunities in the interim, obviously. You know, they've all been informed of that. Um, and again, it'll kind of be at the new manager's discretion to pick up those conversations once he's in place. I did want to add from uh, the uh, standpoint of the manager search process, uh, we do have two internal candidates, uh, Bam Bam Mullins and Ron Wotus, uh, who will be in to at least do a first round interview at some point over the next week. Um, that's kind of step one for us as far as this process goes. What, are, what will be some of the qualities that you'll be looking for in your next manager? To me, the number one uh, quality is just uh, relationship building and uh, that goes both you know probably most importantly in terms of the players and you know I think uh, what we saw on uh, Sunday was a real reflection of what Boach was able to build in terms of his connection with the players and having all those guys come back to honor him uh, I think that's a real reflection of uh, you know, the success that the organization had over his time here is, is, is the trust and the relationship he built with players. But, you know, the flip side of that is having a relationship uh, with the front office and being able to work with them. I think in, you know, the modern game, having a manager that can uh, have productive and trusting relationships in both avenues is really important. And uh, I think you see that with some of the best managers in the game now. So. Uh, that's really going to be number one on the list, you know, as far as I'm concerned, is, is being able to uh, create those relationships uh, on both sides of the house, so to speak. Farhan, I'm sure you know that the trend in manager, new manager hirings is uh, not necessarily experience. In fact, a lot of inexperienced managers are, are hired uh, to be partners with the front office. And, you know, uh, the, the, it's been moving away from the Bochies and the Maddens and the Hurdles. And frankly, Part of the reason is uh, cost savings as well. What is your philosophy on, on that in terms of a manager for, for this organization moving forward? Um, I do think that uh, experience is uh, you know, a, a real potential benefit, especially in the short term. Uh, having been around some first-time managers, I've uh, you know, seeing that the learning curve can be pretty steep. And, uh, you know, to your point, when you are talking about a candidate who has not been in that seat and in that role, uh, there's obviously more projecting uh, because, uh, you know, and I think you will get this from managers that have the experience. You, you don't really know what it's like to be in that seat. Uh, and all the constituents you have and what it's like to be in the dugout with a million you know, voices in your ear about strategy and other things until you've actually done it. So uh, there is a leap of faith uh, that you have to take if um, you know, you're going to hire a manager who hasn't done it before. But um, you know, if nobody ever did it, then we would just have the same pool of candidates. And uh, you know, nobody would ever get another opportunity. And obviously, uh, in LA, uh, Dave Roberts was a first time manager and he's done a terrific job there. So, um, you know, I, I view it as a potential advantage uh, for somebody if they have done it before just because they know what it's like and you know what they're like in that role. I mean, uh, I think what we've seen with managers is that there's a learning curve, not just within an individual managing experience, but uh, a lot of times guys do better and have more traction their second time around because of the lessons that they've learned. So um, you know, I think all that will be factored in. And it's certainly not disqualifying to have not done it before, but I you know, totally recognize the value of that experience. Can I just a quick clarifying? Uh, what do you see your role 
in working with a general manager. And the other thing is you've had about 10 months to think about it. Yeah. Uh, is the slowdown because people you want are in the playoffs now? Is that part of the issue? Well, first of all, it's, it's really um, a search that you can only conduct in the off season. Um, uh, you know, uh, you're not going to be able to hire someone away from another organization in the middle of the season, obviously. So that, that, that's, that's one reason. And again, I, I don't really see it as a slowdown. We're really going to be picking up both the manager and the GM searches. You know, I mean, we're, this, the season ended two days ago. So I think to, to answer your question, and if I, if I made it sound otherwise, I mean, they're both kind of high priorities and we want to move as quickly as possible on both. But as we've talked about some of the realities of scheduling and permission windows, um, you know, it, it's really hard to pinpoint a date when one or the other could get completed. And, you know, I will say on both processes, you know, there's not, um, you know, these gonna, are going to be true processes. There's, there's no um, favorite, let alone somebody who has either job in the bag. It's going to be a true process. And, you know, we're trying to build up a list of compelling candidates to go through. As far as what the GM role is going to be, um, you know, I think about, uh, you know, a few years ago when, um, you know, I, I first got to L.A. in the general manager role under Andrew Friedman. And, um, you know, at the time there was a lot of talk that, you know, this seems like a game of title inflation. You know, nobody's ever needed a president or a GM before and a GM before. And, uh, you know, uh, How's this going to work? And, uh, you know, I feel in five years, baseball's come a long way because there's a tremendous amount of alarm that we don't have a GM <laughs> at this point. Um, but I think it shows, uh, you know, the, the evolution of front offices and, and how sophisticated and, and you know, at, at times complex and involved, uh, you know, running a baseball operations department is. And so I don't really necessarily view it as a fixed division of labor where, you know, my job is going to be to handle these few things and the general manager is going to handle these others. Um, it's really about just sharing the load of managing the overall operation. And I think by not defining it specifically, uh, it opens up the candidate pool, whether it's somebody that has experience and expertise in scouting or player development or, uh, you know, administration, whatever their strengths are, you know, hopefully, um, you know, we can complement each other and, uh, you know, work well in increasing our overall kind of management bandwidth of the operation, which is, you know, I think what, what we, we really need at this point.